for April 1st, 2014. <coughs> I um, call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Ahrens? Here. Kammerer? Here. Carbonero? Here. Martin? Here. Ranky? Here. Shipman? Here. President Wallace? Present. Please stand for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item on the uh, agenda here is the consent agenda. This time, all items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless the board member so requests. In which event, the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered at the appropriate time on the agenda. At this point, um, other than the bills list and Maxine's interior concept change. And Burns amplifier permit request. Is there anything people would like to add or remove? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Martin, seconded by Trustee Kammerer. Will the clerk please call the roll. Trustee Ahrens? Yes. Kammerer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Chipman? Yes. Motion carries. Hmm. Moving right along, we'll go to um, the minutes, which would need a, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Moved by Trustee Carbonero, seconded by Trustee Martin. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Ahrens? Yes. Kammerer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Shipman? Abstain. Um, could I, I just want to clarify that that would be the minutes for the budget public hearing, the board meeting yep. review minutes, correct? Let me list them. <laughs> 2014-2015, these are the minutes for 2014-2015 budget public hearing minutes for March 18, 2014, um, board minutes for March 18, 2014, and the 2014-2015 budget review minutes on March 18, 2014. They were not on the consent agenda because all um, trustees were not present. Thank you. Are we good? Next item is the treasurer's report. Seeing none, we'll move on to the president's report. Um, this evening we have a um, resolution um, for Public Works Director Paul Kester. And I requested that uh, the longest standing uh, trustee read the uh, resolution for me. Um, so uh, TL, uh, would you be so kind as to read uh, Mr. Kester's Resolution. It's, it's my honor to do so. A, rec a resolution recognizing Public Works Director Paul Kester upon his retirement from the Village of Bartlett. Whereas many a, small, many a small child enjoys running through backyard sprinklers or splashing in their evening bath, very few graduate to the highest level of water play overseeing the smooth operation of a water system that pumps 3.25 million gallons of water per day to its consumers and includes more than 165 miles of water lines, 140 plus miles of sanitary sewer lines, over 173 miles of storm sewer lines, multiple wells, pumping stations, and a municipal wastewater treatment facility. And whereas many kids like to play with toy trucks, both bigger ones that you pedal, smaller ones that you push, very few of them grow up to expertly manage a full-size fleet of trucks and equipment and a crew that uses them to salt, plow, sweep, and repair 140 miles of streets and trim trees and chip brush along 260 miles of parkway 
in 20 miles of bike paths. And whereas many people find satisfying careers in the public sector, few of them are like Bartlett Public Works Director Paul Kester, who practically grew up on the job. Beginning his employment with the village in April of 1974, as one of just four full-time employees in the Public Works Department and worked his way from the street department to the water department to supervisor of water operations to director of operations for the entire Public Works Department in 1990 and to his position as Bartlett's director of Public Works in 1993. And whereas the village is forever appreciative that Paul made the maintenance of Bartlett's infrastructure and service to its 14,000 plus homes, businesses, and other facilities, the full-time job for 40 years, dedicating his work days and many nights as well to keeping our street lights lit at night, our potholes filled, our kitchen faucets running, and our toilets flushing. And whereas Paul's retirement this spring comes only after he has reached a final and fitting cap to his professional accomplishments. He has earned bragging rights for working during this working during the surviving working and surviving all three of Chicago area's snowiest seasons on record. The first place 78-79 season with 89.7 inches of snow, the second place 1977 to 78 season with 82.3 inches of snow, and this past winter with a final total, hopefully, we never know, of 79.1 inches of snow. Now therefore, we in the village of Bartlett, Cook, DuPage, and Kane County, Illinois, offer our many Many thanks to Public Works Director Paul Kester for his 40 years of service to our community. We are proud to have had you as an employee in the village of Bartlett, and we wish you good health and much happiness in your retirement. Thank you, Paul. Talking for having cake, Paul. Yeah. <clears throat> he gets pre salt as long as he stays in the state of Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> now that doesn't come along very often, right? It's All right, moving along, we'll go to uh, question and answer. Um, 
At this point, is there are, uh, is any trustees have any questions for the board uh, staff? Oh, I signed the one up there. Um, I did. Uh, I, brought, I brought up a month or two ago about the um, adding to our ordinance about taking down dead trees, and I wondered, have we made any progress on that? We have. The ordinance is written. Uh, we have included it in the uh, building code, which we are bringing to you, if not this next meeting, but the meeting after. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. Good question. I'm sorry. We were actually, um, the, today, we're talking about modifying that a little bit, pulling it out of the building code. but. Um, a separate tree to put it in our nuisance section, but we we're working on it. It's, you know, even today, and getting a, we want to uh, get some comments from the village arborist, but it'll be here shortly, with right around the time we'll be bringing the building code. So, good. Anything else? Hearing none, we'll move on to the town hall portion of the meeting. Uh, at this point, uh, if you'd like to address the board, we ask that you come up to the podium and state your name uh, and address for the record. And please keep your comments to three minutes. Hi, I'm uh, Gary Place, 128 South Hickory. Uh, I wanted to uh, address a, a traffic situation that, uh, that my wife and I observed uh, last week uh, as we were uh, heading uh, towards home, we were uh, eastbound on railroad, uh, and in front of us was an 18-wheeler uh, truck uh, heading also eastbound on railroad, and he then attempted to make a left on Western uh, and realized that uh, he couldn't make the turn uh, because there was a car trying to come out southbound on Western to make a turn, uh, and then another car and then another one, and he stood, stayed there, and then finally backed up and pulled on straight down. Uh, this is unfortunately a problem because uh, trucks regularly use this to try to avoid going through the stoplight. The stoplight is where the safe turn is because there's nobody trying to come across, and the, the, the width of the truck trying to turn uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't cause a problem for oncoming traffic like it does at Western. Uh, and we were thinking that, that re there really ought to be some means of, of preventing heavy truff, truck traffic going through that, that uh, Western Avenue uh, corner there. And it seemed like a, a simple solution to that might be to apply weight limits on those streets. Uh, with a simple put up a sign and say, nothing over this size can go down these streets and that would alleviate the problems of trucks trying to make tight corners uh, in residential areas and, if, and particularly there where it's a, another accident potentially waiting to happen. Yeah. And we've also observed a problem similarly with, with even school buses. The school bus is what, uh, 30 feet long, it tries to pull up and stops as they have to do by law and nobody can see around them, nobody can get around them until they close their doors and move on. Uh, so, you know, that one is, is a, a, a problem, too. I don't know what you can do with the schools. They're, they've got their routes and do what they have to do, but that's another dangerous situation we've seen on many occasions. And then the third item to address is, is the uh, left turn at Bartlett Avenue by, uh, by the bank. Uh, where there is a no left turn sign, which is routinely ignored. We witnessed that pretty virtually every day, someone making an illegal left turn at that, uh, at that corner. And that was originally put in place because people coming across the tracks would get stopped on the tracks waiting for someone to make a left turn. They're not supposed to do. I don't see that getting uh, enforced. And that's the last item I wanted to mention. I'd love, love to see that enforced a little bit better. A few tickets handed out might make a difference in the way people do. But they turn there constantly. Thank you, Thanks. Mr. Place. Um, Chief, do you have any comments off the, as far as the trucks turning in there? Well, if, if they're making a local delivery, they're allowed to. But we, but we can put up signage, and we, we can research it on, uh, on the board's behalf, and we'll bring back a recommendation. Yeah, that would be good. Um, I, I've often thought I haven't seen that many trucks back in there until that one got hit. So. Correct. Okay. Thank you. 
Would anybody else like to address the board at this time? Joan Price, 128 South Hickory. I too have, I, I was with my husband when we observed that truck, but earlier, probably a month, maybe six weeks prior to this, we, uh, I, I was alone and I was driving on North Avenue heading toward Oak. And I observed a, one of these 18 wheelers, sort of like the one we had that got hit by the train. And it was carrying a load of truck cabs for 18 wheelers. And he was coming through, crossed over, heading east, I mean west onto North, he was on North Avenue, crossed over Oak, and then continued heading west. Well, I knew he couldn't possibly be delivering that to the cemetery and uh, dropping that load off there. But uh, I assumed he did the western route, turned left there with that vehicle and crossed the tracks. And the only reason all of this happens all the time with these trucks we see is because they're trying to avoid the stoplights. Yeah. And so they're taking residential routes and using them. I cannot believe that we can continue to have these types of vehicles going down residential streets. They're not a really equipped to handle the kind of weight, nor the size of these vehicles going through. Yeah. And uh, that's, point. you know, another thing, it's, it's putting a strain on the infrastructure of the village. And I can't imagine that being home rule community, we couldn't do something like just put weight limits and then the police could give warnings to the truckers. Um, those that don't follow after being warned could get tickets and the word would get out that this is not just a pass through and that's all Bartlett is being used for is to get from 59 or West Bartlett Road over to Lake Street without having to go through the sure. stop signs and stop lights. Thanks for bringing that to mm -hmm. our attention. Could we get some, maybe some follow up at a future meeting on that too? Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Anybody else at this time like to address the board? Hearing none, we'll move on to standing committee reports. Um, next item on the agenda is the um, Standing Committee Reports, which is the uh, Planning and Zoning Committee, chaired by Trustee Kammer. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, tonight we had two items on our agenda, one of which is on the consent agenda with the Maxines and the interior concept change. So the first one we'll talk about is the uh, uh, Seasons Produce Market Number 2, special use for outdoor sales at the Bartlett <coughs> Plaza Shopping Center. The uh, petitioner, John, I'm going to butcher it, um, Cappadocus, is proposing to operate an outdoor produce market in a uh, portion of the shopping center, a parking lot from May 1st through November 30th on Fridays and Saturdays, weather permitting. The plan commission held a public hearing on March 13th, 2014, and recommended approval subject to certain conditions. I therefore approve or move to approve ordinance 2014 18. 18, an ordinance approving a special use permit to allow outdoor sales for Seasons Produce Market 2 in the Bartlett Plaza Shopping Center as presented. Second. Second. Moved by Trustee Kammerer, seconded by Trustee Martin. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Ahrens? Yes. Hammerer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Shipman? Yes. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is under Building Committee, Chairman Martin. Thank you, Mr. President. I have nothing at this time. No report. Thank you, Chairman Martin. Next item is the Finance and Golf Committee, Chairman Ranky. Thank you, Mr. President. The only item we have on uh, tonight's agenda is the Clark Mosquito Control uh, Agreement uh, with Wayne Township. Um, with that, I'd like to turn this over <coughs> to, uh, to Scott. Yes, sir. Uh, 
the rank and answer any questions that you have. Well, my, my question is if it uh, looks like we pay about 90 percent of the, uh, the fees under this agreement to Clark, uh, the mosquito abatement contractor, uh, but the agreement's really through Wayne Township, and they, they pay 10 percent. That, that's correct. Wayne Township, uh, several years ago, I believe it was 1996, uh, came together and negotiated a contract with several communities that, um, in order for us to conglomerate, actually got a cheaper deal. So they continued to negotiate, and uh, this latest contract, there was no increase, and uh, that cost won't go up in the next several years. So staff felt like uh, continuing with them was a was good practice. Okay, and you're comfortable with allowing Wayne Township to negotiate the contract on our behalf. You're comfortable with that? Is it, we've, we've continued to do it, and we've got a real good result so far. And when our residents call and there's a complaint, they're pretty good about uh, getting right on top of that. So we do feel comfortable due to the history with them. Okay, thank you. Sure. <clears throat> Any other questions? All right, I move to approve the Wayne Township United uh, Mosquito Control Program for the years 2014 through 2017. Second. Moved by Trustee Franke, seconded by Trustee Hammerer to approve the Wayne Township United Mosquito Control Program for years 2014 through 2017. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, the clerk please call the roll. Trustee Ahrens? Abstain. Cameron? A yes. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Shipman? Yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> you for assured that there's no more mosquitoes in my neighborhood. Moving right along, License and Ordinance Committee, Chairman Carbonero. Thank you, Mr. President. We have two items on the agenda of tonight. Um, next is the um, Ordinance 2014-19 is an ordinance amending the Bartlett Liquor Control Ordinance. It creates a Class O license and amends the Class M Liquor license. I will ask Brian Mraz, Village Attorney, to review the changes proposed in this ordinance. <coughs> Thank you, Trustee Carbonero. <coughs> Banbury Fair approached the village about <clears throat> uh, a caterer's liquor license. And originally we had a license that only allowed for in-town caterers. And <clears throat> um, the Bartlett businesses availed themselves of that uh, different uh, in-town uh, on-premises liquor licensees. And because th they require a state caterers license as well and the process of going through that most of our uh, licensees decided not to go that route we came up with uh, then originally had a class M on a temporary basis for Banbury Fair and that was to accommodate a couple of weddings that were held there where the brides had not um, had already signed contracts and that sunset so last year we came up with an M and uh, re resurrected the Class M. Uh, but it has some criteria and requirements that the uh, owner of Banbury Fair and its wedding planner uh, have found still to be fairly onerous. So we contacted the State Lick Illinois Liquor Control Commission uh, about processes and things and what we could do to further streamline it. One of the things that uh, we looked at and is in this draft ordinance, or the ordinance that's before you, is to eliminate the duplication of having the licensee uh, get fingerprinted uh, through Bartlett, the criminal background check the state and talking to the state, they require any out-of-town caterer to also have a local caterer's license from another municipality 
and do that, they have to submit fingerprinting. They have to have a criminal background check. And so one of the complaints and one of the things we're talking about eliminating would be the duplicate, duplicate step of re-fingerprinting them. Also, we require that they have a retailer's license in another municipality. Uh, and what that means essentially is that they're not just a catering operation, but they have a restaurant. Uh, in talking to this wedding planner and others, um, there are some viable businesses that simply are catering. They do not have a bricks and mortar restaurant per se. They may just have, they may just cater. And so another change to the M that's in this proposed ordinance before you is to eliminate the local retail and the state retail license. A caterer can have a state catering license and then a catering license from Bartlett, and that would be sufficient to serve alcohol as long as it's incidental to food service. Um, and the third uh, significant change would be uh, the current class M requires a class uh, requires both a state caterer's license and a special use permit uh, state license. This would eliminate the second requirement of the state use permit license, which is you'll see when we talk about the new class would be more applicable there. So the caterer would apply for um, certain dates and times. They would they have to have a state caterer's liquor's license, and then they would get a Bartlett caterer's license. The fees would be uh, $200 a year, since we're not doing the criminal background check. The additional uh, fee for some of that cost was dropped from $50 on top of the 200 to uh, an additional $25 for reviewing the, that paperwork. Um, one of the things that uh, Mr. Suffern brought up was that while some of the local businesses were not interested in getting a state caterer's license, they might be interested in serving alcohol at his event if there were separate food caterers. And so in town, licensees, they have a retail license to sell liquor on premises. They can get a license from the state, it's a special use permit is what it's called, to take their liquor and sell it off their premises. It's limited to about 10 times a year that, that the state would allow that. But uh, if they have that special use permit and proof that they have insurance for that separate location, then they could get uh, what this would propose would be also a local special use permit to allow one of the holders of our on-premises liquor licenses to provide alcohol at a catered event uh, where food is served by probably a different food caterer. And you see a lot of that weddings is they, they bride picks, uh, you know, the food they like, but not necessarily, you know, did they necessarily offer the whole package. O'Hare uh, had expressed a willingness to do that for events at Banbury Fair, and this would allow that uh, to happen um, if we created this new Class O license. Uh, we're talking about a relatively small cost there, $100. It's kind of a chicken-egg thing. The mayor has to say, uh, I intend to issue that license, that special use permit. The state issues it for specific dates, times, locations. They come back with that, and then uh, the mayor, the local liquor commissioner, would issue then a special use permit license, which we're calling a Class O. So uh, and the cost we're talking about it would be $100. And if they add events to it after the initial application, it would be 25 per event because we'd have to be looking at all that paperwork and reviewing that again. So that's what's before you, uh, an amendment to the Class M and a creation of a new Class O liquor license. Thank you. Uh, with that, I move the passage of Ordinance 2014-19, an ordinance amending Title Three, Chapter 3 of the Bartlett Municipal Code to amend the Bartlett Liquor Control Ordinance to add a new Class O license classification and amending Section 3-3-2-15 of the Liquor Control Ordinance regarding Class M licenses. Second. It's 
It's moved by Trustee Carbonero, seconded by Trustee Martin. Is there any discussion? I have a couple questions for Brian. Um, Chief, I'm going to put you on the spot in a second. I apologize. Um, so as I understand this, we're still going to require a license. Yes. For everybody to do all this. That doesn't change. The license. Well, be more specific of the license. But that's what I'm saying. A liquor license? For, some, for somebody to have liquor served at their outdoor event or at their catered event, they're still going to need to have someone who has a special liquor license issued by the village. And the state. To do just that. And the state. Yeah. Okay. My only concern, and I, I, asked, I have to double check with the chief on this. Chief, w obviously we fingerprint everybody who gets a liquor license. Is that correct? And what's the purpose for that? <coughs> Criminal background check real quick to make sure if there's any felony convictions. And what does it do going forward? What does it do going forward? In other words, once a person's fingerprinted by the Bartlett Police Department, say six months later they get arrested for something, what happens? Are you saying are we at continually re reprinting them? No, no, no. I guess my, all right, here's my understanding of it. If the Bartlett Police Department uh, fingerprints somebody for whatever reason, and six months later, they're in another community and they get arrested for something. Bartlett Police is notified of that arrest. Is that correct? Automatically, would they send yes. us a message that they were arrested and not, not necessarily? I, and I, we may have a misunderstanding of what occurs under Leeds, but that's my only concern. I think it's going to catch the initial one. I don't think it, because we're not doing new. Uh, background searches so I don't know how leads works with respect to alerts if you've already done a search okay. my knowledge it doesn't happen and if it did you know they have their state license as well and ongoing reporting requirements uh, Fair enough. But it's a good question and it is a relatively confusing setup. It is. Um, because Brian's uh, stuff is never confusing. <laughs> Believe me, I've, I've, less than it was. I've learned more about the uh, uh, O's, uh, O's, K's, and M's and all the letters that we have than I really wanted to. But essentially, from, uh, from the 30,000 foot view, there was a license in effect where we had uh, facilities in Bartlett that wanted to supply liquor and facilities outside of Bartlett that wanted to supply food and we couldn't get them to mesh and nobody really had the proper licensing to do that. So we've done our best to try to allow the facilities within the village to supply liquor to an event that a, a, a facility outside the village is supplying food to and have that all correlate so it's done properly with the proper licensing and the proper restrictions in place. So that's essentially what this does. Which I'm completely in favor of. Yeah. And this, it's not just limited to Banbury Fair, though. They no. can go whatever no. part they... No, it helps the uh, Labella's Banquet Facility as well. That was the original impetus for the Class M beside Banbury Fair. It's not just a one site. Uh, it's not just special for that uh, yeah. particular licensee or location. And then this was one of those instances where a 20-year in the business caterer came back to the village and said, I've been doing this for 20 years, but... You know, I've never had this quite, this problem before. So went to Brian, went to Val, uh, Ms. Madam Administrator, and they figured it out, and and uh, this was the solution. So hopefully that will bring some weddings to our area because everybody knows when you go to a wedding, you don't just go to the wedding. Yeah, you just <laughs> part of it. Okay. Did we already move? Yes. Has it been, <coughs> been made? Okay. Is there any other discussion? Somebody answer that phone. Um, clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Ahrens? Yes. Cameron? Here. Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Shipman? Yes. Motion carries. We have one other item under the uh, license. We have one other item under the license and ordinance. Uh, this is the 2014-2015 strategic plan draft, and do you want me to read this? No. Or is this for Paula? Okay. <coughs> is this for you or for Paula? I'm sorry. Um, as you know, with our strategic plan process, the board has 
uh, a meeting out of Bartlett Hills and and you develop the uh, goals and objectives for the staff we then do the same thing and come up with uh, the more detailed action steps we put the two together we bring them back to you to make sure you're comfortable with it and then we will print it do you have a sample of, um, we'll have it printed in in a nice easy fold out uh, that we can put places for our residents to read put it on our our web uh, and in the BART letter and continue the process that we have had for 20 years uh, in terms of strategic planning Motion to approve the 2014-2015 strate strategic plan as presented. Second. Second. Moved by Trustee Carbonero, seconded by Trustee Shipman. Is there any discussion? I think generally we've made some uh, a great deal of progress in a number of different uh, items here, and, and I'm, I'm glad to see the, the, uh, the strategic plan change. Yes, it did. You know, I'd like to say to you that. Um, in the, uh, the 20 years that we've been doing the strategic plan, it has, it has served us well. And I think um, uh, we, uh, the village, uh, has been followed in suit by many of the other taxing districts. And I think they've discovered the, um, the wisdom in doing the strategic plan. And uh, so hopefully we all know where we're all going, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but staff's always done a good job. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's not the easiest task to take obscure or sometimes broad goals and align them with some type of uh, objectives and, and then activity around those objectives. So well done. Any other discussion? Thank you, Paula. You were there on that day, that long, long, on onerous <laughs> day. You left before the cookies, though. <laughs> Hearing none, with a quick, please call the roll. Trustee Ahrens? Yes. Kammerer? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Shipman? Yes. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is under Police and Health Committee. Chairman Shipman? There's nothing to report tonight, Mayor. Thank you, Cha Chairman Shipman. Uh, next on the agenda is Public Works Committee. Chairman Ahrens? Nothing to report. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Chairman Ahrens. Uh, next item on the agenda is new business. Is there any new business at this point to get to the order? I think... Trustee Aaron's brought up one thing that we're going to try to focus on was the tree deal, and that, that's going to come up, right, for new business pretty soon here? With with the... The tree removal? Yes, it will. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Anything else? Hearing none, we'll move on to questions and answers. Other than we're getting close to the Kester cake. Um, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to return. I moved. Sorry. Sorry. Moved by Trustee Aaron, seconded by Trustee Ranke. Will the clerk please call the roll? And just again, for you people in the audience, we're going to be adjourning for cake to honor 40-year um, uh, veteran Kester. Um, and then uh, we'll return back for the committee of the whole meeting. Now will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Aaron? Yes. Kammerer? Here. Carbonero? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ranke? Yes. Here.